Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am here with my recurring guest, Chris Dufour. He is our resident Red Sox fan, and we will be talking today with him about the Red Sox and the outlook for 2023. And we will also be discussing the upcoming 2023 baseball season, the rules that they will be implementing this year, and the new schedule. So, uh, Can we talk about the uh, scraggly beard you're wearing or that silly hat? <laughs> like, let me get a hat on. All right, I'm ready. There you go. And you know what? You it's, always, it's always a winter hat. You could be on my July show. Yeah. Week. Well, it's cold where I live. When you got a bald head that's as big as mine, the big melon, it's a lot more area than your head. <laughs> it's cold. Right. All right, so you're a Red Sox fan. That's Look, true, 50 years now. Disappointing year last year for the Red Sox, I think. It wasn't great. No, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't great. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> got to admit, it wasn't great. It was not fun. Heim Bloom. So. So, in in light of how badly last year went for them, what do you think uh, the outlook is for 2023? Well, as you may know, I'm an optimist. Now, last year, I was so optimistic. I picked them to make the World Series, and they finished last and in one of the worst seasons they ever had. Because they had a Cinderella run in nineteen or in twenty twenty one, or nineteen twenty one too. I can't remember one of those. Yeah, I don't know. Was it Cinderella in twenty twenty one? What did they run to? They went to the. Uh, they went to the American. They went to the ALCS. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah, I thought that was. I thought they overachieved that year. Uh, so I don't know. Let's see. Well, we don't really have any good catchers, right? We got Reese McGuire, Connor Wong, and Jorge Alfaro. Alfaro, now over the winter, Alfaro was named the MVP of the Dominican League uh, World Series, I believe, hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. Wong uh, is young and has shown a lot of promise, but he just got hurt, so he's not going to be on the uh, opening day roster. He just pulled a hammy, I think. Grade one. Hamstring. Yeah. And then uh, Reese McGuire. Now, see, here's the thing about Reese McGuire. I kind of like Reese McGuire. I like his stroke, but I'm not going to like it if he's hitting 103 with it. So, you know. I mean, he's a good defensive catcher. Yeah. Yeah. And Wong's got a lot of pop from the right side. but So, I mean, that's a fine. Now, first base, we got Tristan Cassis, the young stud. Been expecting him to uh, be up in the majors for a while now. And uh, like last. Justin Turner. Justin Turner isn't going to play a lot of first base, but he will play some, I think. But mostly. Uh, spring game that I watched the other day. I can't hear you. You're mumbling. Do you think, do you think the people. He did a spring game you? that I watched. What? He played first base in a spring game that I was watching. That doesn't mean he's going to play first base all the time. All right. Well, all right. Just because you saw one spring training game where he played an inning at first base, will you stop it? Stop it. Just stop it. Just stop the nonsense. Yes, right. he's gonna. Play, they're going to try to play him at some first base. He's, it's not a position he's played a lot, so I hope they don't play him too much there. I mean, like the Frenchy Cordero experiment all over again. We don't want that. Right. But, uh, I mean, I like, you know, I'm not thrilled with the Turner pickup because, I mean, I like Justin Turner as a ball player. But just in the scope of the Red Sox roster, I don't know why we needed Justin Turner. You know? He is getting Can you out. explain it? No, I can't explain it, no. Well, I mean, they probably had to look like they were doing something. Well, that's just it. It's all, it's all just about them protecting their image, which is stupid. Yeah. But anyway, Turner's a fine ball player. I just, you know, he's 38 years old and what, what he's got left in the tank. I mean, they signed him over J.D. Martinez. So, I, and it's, can he can he equal J.D.'s production of last year? Probably because J.D. didn't have a very good year. But is he going to be 
the J.D. Martinez of 2018? No. But then again, who is? So, I don't know. I mean, if they don't want to spend the money, that's fine. I mean, you know, the expectations Except they did both. spend the money to go out and get a big contract for Devers, an extension for Devers. So. Yeah. Yeah, they did that to save face also because they let Bogarts go in the whole – New England region was going to, uh, you know, become Yankee fans if they didn't do the Devers deal. So they did. And that's nice. Devers is a nice player. I like Devers. I'm glad we gave him the money. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's definitely. I'm glad we spent the money on Devers over Bogarts. I'll be honest. The whole Bogarts thing is just so ridiculous because Xander Bogarts loves Xander Bogarts. Don't get me wrong. But he's not the greatest shortstop in the history of the world. He doesn't. He, he's not worthy of the contract the Padres gave him, and he's older. You know, he's he's what five? I don't know, four or five years older than Devers. So let's spend the money on the younger player, and lock him up, and let the uh, and let Devers go play short stuff for the Padres for eleven years, which I doubt is going to happen. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. The problem with the uh, with the Red Sox is the way they went about replacing Bogarts. Now I assume. I'm going to, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt that they had planned on story just moving back to shortstop, which makes a lot of sense. You know, to me, I just want to say this. The Red Sox are not at fault for Bogarts. The Red Sox, I think, they won't come out and say it because the fan base is so amped up. But they made, a, they made an evaluation. They evaluated a player and they said, hey, we got Trevor Story and Rafael Devers. And to us, Xander's not as good as those two players. So, you know, we'll we'll let him go to someone who offers him $300 million for 11 years. I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. I, I like Xander as a player, but, you know, the money is, you know, and now, you know. Well, so, that was, I mean, that was a similar situation when they let Betts go to L.A. No, that was, I mean, it was a similar situation, I guess, but they traded Betts, remember? They didn't, they didn't let Yeah, him well, go. yeah, but they knew they weren't going to be able to sign him to the money he wanted, so. They could have signed Bogarts if they wanted. I think they evaluated him and said, and didn't think, and he, they just decided he wasn't worth the money. So they made a half-baked offer last April. I mean, the way they went about it was atrocious, but. I think simply in the end, they evaluated the player and the player got offered more money than they wanted to spend. So let him go and that's fine. That's fine with me. I mean, it's, you know, it's not good riddance. I'm going to miss Andrew. He was a heck of a player, but we finished last with him. We can finish last without him. And so, but the problem is now story's hurt. You know, the the news right after Bogart's leaves or is that story all of a sudden has to have like a, near Tommy John surgery, some kind of brace surgery, which is some type of prerequisite, but not as bad as Tommy John. So that's a blow because you kind of hope that Trevor had some pride and would have had a better year, you know, and maybe, you know, and, and they say he might come back for a couple months. So maybe he will. And then, so I guess that's second, you know, that leaves us with a Rojo and a few other people. Uh, Kiki's going to play short, which is fine short term, but long term, it's going to, it's not going to be, you know, these people that are like, oh, Kiki looks good at short. Kiki looks good at short spring training. Well, that's stupid. Yeah, Kiki might look good at short for April and May, but come August, Kiki's going to wear down. He's, he's not going to be a good shortstop. There's a reason he hasn't played major league shortstop for 162 games. Am I wrong? No, uh, you're no. not wrong. No. He doesn't have the range. No. So, and they, you know, they could have gone out and got Iglesias and or some, you know a couple other guys. Now Iglesias' range is obviously not what it once was, but it's probably, I'm guessing, better than Kiki's. So I don't know. I mean, I like Kiki again. You know, solid player, but put him in a starring role at shortstop for 162 games, it's not going to work. Yeah. In the outfield, we got uh, the Japanese import guy. I can't remember his name though. I don't know. Uh, we gave him like $90 million, though, for six years. So that's another experiment. Do you see what yeah. the constant theme is here? It's yeah. all kinds of ifs and nuts and candies and butts, you know? I mean, I don't know what's going to happen any more than, you know, anybody. 
because I don't think the Red Sox know what's going to happen. Right. But then we and got on top uh, of everything, they're in a brutal division. So, yeah, I don't care about the division. I think it's overhyped. You know, the Blue Jays sh- should be good, but never really are as good as they should be. The Yankees are going to collapse because of the injuries. I'm sure they'll have a good year, but you know, it's you know, I don't know. But uh, Orioles are up and coming, but they're not a get us, you know, guarantee. Who does that leave? The, the Yankees, Blue Jays, and uh, the Orioles. There's one other team, right? The Rays. Right, the Rays. Now, the Rays, to me, will probably win the division because I always just kind of forget about them, and just like I just did, and, and they win the division. And they have, you know, they have the same ingredients they have always had, you know. So they got good pitching with, you know, McClanahan and other people. And, you know, Wander Franco is going to be a superstar. And the hands down. So, anyway, that's not that has nothing to do with the Red Sox. Who's playing center field for the Red Sox? Um, Left field's the Japanese import, and then uh, right field's Verdugo, right? Yeah. What about? Oh, I guess is Kiki gonna, No, Kiki's going to play short. He can't play center and short at the same time. Come on. Right. What about Duran? Yeah, I mean they're going to play Duran, but I thought they got they had one other guy that's not sticking sticking in my head at the moment. Shoot. Anyway. Uh. Yeah, so their depth is – they don't have a lot of depth. They don't – who knows what their talent's going to be like, you know, in the Major League lineup. Uh, and then you get to the pitching staff, and you're like, oh, wait, this is also very unsettled. Now, you know, I was looking forward to seeing Paxton play for us because they said his arm looked really good. But pa- pa- Paxton can't stay healthy. He's he's actually less healthy than I am, for God's sake. I don't know how that's possible. But, I mean, just yesterday he, he suffered another injury that's going to not let him be ready for the start of the season. Yeah. I mean, forget about the fact he hasn't pitched in two years. Yeah. Am I boring you? No, uh, you're not. You look a little tired. Yeah, well, it is 940 at night. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's Come on, that's common. So, anyway, I mean, you got Sale. You got uh, – Navaldi went to the Rangers, so – you got Hauk, you got Whitlock, you got Paxton, you got Sale. I know I'm forgetting somebody else, but, uh, you know, it's not an inspiring group. I mean, if everything went right and Whitlock pitched in a, in a rotation and Sale was good and Paxton was healthy and he pitched great and, I don't know, they got two other guys, I'm sure. That I can't remember off the top of my head. It's silly now to think uh, that I can't remember these guys' names, but it's not Walker because he's gone. Avaldi went to the Rangers. Walker went to. Did Walker go to the Padres eventually? Is that what happened? I don't know where he went. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think he went to the Padres. So I might be wrong. But uh, it's not, you know, it's not a real, it's a lot of ifs. You know, I don't know if they're ready. Let's talk about these, uh, the rule change. Oh, well, can't do you want me to predict where the Red Sox are going to finish, or you just want to go down to the rule change? Where, where, where do you think the Red Sox will finish? I think the Red Sox are going to probably finish third, third or fourth. Third, third. I mean, fourth, maybe. Yeah, I could buy into fourth. I don't know about that. But... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling it right now. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So, uh, rule changes. Let's roll. Let's go. Yeah, let's roll with it. Uh, first one, uh, the, and probably the least controversial one of all of them, the bigger bases. Yeah, I love the big bases. What's wrong with big bases? Yeah, there's nothing. I wrong. love big bases. I cannot lie. Avoid. <laughs> avoid. It'll help avoid injury. Um, I think that's what they said they were going to do it for, but it'll also increase offense a little bit because – there's, you know, with all these bang bang plays that you've seen in the past, some of these guys are going to be safe on a lot of those that were, you know, out. Yeah, I hope it. I hope it uh, increases stolen bases. I'll tell you that. Yeah, might do I that don't know if too. it will, but maybe it will. Right, and that in combination with another rule change, the pitch clock, and yeah, the fact it. that the pitcher is only allowed to throw over. Or two disengagements unless he gets the runner on the third try. Yeah. 
So that might also contribute to more stolen bases. You would think. But uh, it is definitely, it seems to be quickening the pace of the games, which is what they wanted to do. Yep. Yeah, 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. I didn't realize the impact it was going to have on the hitters, which I think is great. Yeah. You know, they have to get they have the to be ready to hit. Line. They have to be in the box ready to hit with eight seconds. Yeah, that that had never registered to me when we talked. Kept talking pitch clock, but uh, I'm glad that's part of the whole thing package, you know. Yeah, but I think the pitchers. It's great because you can see like a Max Scherzer was playing games yesterday, you know, yeah. trying to pitch fast, trying to pitch the late late in the cl pitch clock. So, I think they're all going to try to figure it out and to, you know what plays to their advantage the best. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably just a matter of them getting used to it, and then yeah, I think I would think, and I think at the end of the out. day, it's going to make it you know close to a half hour faster game, which mm -hmm. I'm all for that. Yeah, we know you are all for that. Anything that makes us, you know, the game less dependent on the three true outcomes, I'm for. But you know, and you know, of course, we haven't talked about the ban of the shift, so. Right, banning the shift. Now, that's my least favorite one because I think that you shouldn't be telling managers how to run their ball clubs. But, I mean, to me, the manager is given nine fielders. He should be able to do with those nine fielders whatever he wants to do. But that's me. Everybody's given, you know, the football coach is given 11 players. He's not allowed to do whatever he wants to do with them. You can't put eight guys on the line of scrimmage. You can't put five wide, you know, you can't put six wide receivers on the field. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a, I, I, the baseball purist is upset because the managers can't do what they want to do. Shut up. Not you, just in general. I'm tired of this argument about it. You know, the shift was never a natural thing to begin with. You know, it just started happening in, what, the late 40s? Yeah. You know, I mean, and then and then no one expected it to become all the rage that we're going to do it for, you know, when Boudreaux did it for Williams, no one thought it was going to be so prevalent that it was going to take away, you know. So My other thing is that the hitters could have gotten rid of the shift themselves by just working on bunting and hitting the ball the other way, but. Yeah, they didn't, they chose not to. They chose not to. So that's fine. I don't care that the shift is being banned. In fact, I wish they banned it even more. I wish there was even more restrictions. But True, because some teams are trying to work around that by swinging the uh, right field or the left fielder over to right, short right field. Yeah, right. So and leaving uh, left field abandoned, but. Again, if, if you're not going to hit it to left, it doesn't the batter matter. And you see that, then you should say to yourself, hey, if I hit this ball to left field, I'm going to have a triple. But they won't say that. They're going to still try to hit, pull the ball, and hit a home run. Probably. I mean, some people hit home runs to the opposite field, like J.D. Martinez. But I mean, his, you know, some people's power to the is is more prevalent to the opposite field. But, yes, your point is mostly true. Yeah. Yeah. Especially at Fenway, man. If we if they abandon left field in Fenway, just pepper the wall. You're not going to get a triple, but you get a double. Right. Right. But, I mean. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't, you know, I love the game, and uh, I don't think banning the shift's going to ruin the game in any stretch. I don't think the pitch count's going to well, ruin the game. Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's going to ruin the game. I just. Don't like the idea of no because you're uh, this every rule that plays with the freedom of the manager to make a decision upsets you. Right. I don't care. Exactly right. Shut up. Not you again. Again, he's not talking to I'm me. Not talking to you. <laughs> I'm just saying it's like you know what you know basketball. Do you, they got five guys? You you know do you see them all guarding one player or do you can you? Can you uh, can you stand in the charge? Block? No, you can't. You cannot stand under the basket. That's right. So I mean, point. come on, man. There's rules every in every game. It's not it's not particular to baseball. Yeah. You're just old and you like baseball the way you grew up with it. 
Yeah, you're just an old man who liked baseball the way he grew up. That's really it. It's not you're, you're not you're not indignant about a rule change. <laughs> wow, I want what I wanted when I was twelve. Wow, I'm a baby. <laughs> Oh God! I can't even take a break. I'll spit it all out. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm interested to see how it how it affects the game. Maybe yeah. there'll be more more runs. Who knows? So now was there more another, runs not not related to a home there, run? You know, I don't know if there was another rule change. Or not. I'm sure, there was the but. bases, the clock, the no. I think that was. I think those were the three major ones. Did they, they? Well, the Ghost Runners in play still, right? They made it. Well, yeah, but that was from a year or two ago. Well, you hated that too. I do hate that. Yes, I yeah. absolutely do, and it's not. I going hate to... the fact that they call it a Ghost Runner. It's not a Ghost Runner. A Ghost I, Runner is when we play those runner. games. That's we what were... I like to. I like to poke fun at it to call it that. Well, we're gonna poke fun at you. I mean, that was fun when we were kids, and we didn't have enough to play with, so you had to say, "Hey, Ghosty on second. Well, now you got a real Ghosty on second. I don't even know. That doesn't even make any sense. You now you've just gone into crazy town. You be, you just won an election. You become the mayor of crazy town in ten seconds. <laughs> I don't. I don't even understand what what kind of pro. Who's going to watch this program? Oh. dude, it's like. I mean, what are you going? Are you sitting on your lawn in a chair with a shotgun, telling people to get off your lawn? What now here is something that's new for twenty twenty three. Not a rule, not really a rule change, but it is something I'm happy about. Every team will play every team for the first yeah. time in Major League Baseball history. Yeah. Yeah. Oddly enough, I don't love that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I just, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm like, I like the leagues. Oh, American League play them. I know the little fancy dancy. Well, let's do it. Right. But they've been play. slowly drifting away from that for years. So. I know. I know. But, uh, but that's where I become the old man who likes the game the way it used to be when the AL played the AL and the NL played the NL. That, I like that. Well, I don't like the, I didn't like the 18 games, you know, with division rivals. I didn't like that. That's a lot of games to play against each other one season. But I did like – I do like just yeah. – uh, and I don't mind the interleague play if it's, you know, you know three teams or four teams. But I didn't want to – I didn't want to get to a point where everyone was playing everybody in every league. I didn't want to get to that. Well, I don't care if the Red NHL Sox – I don't want to see the Red Sox NBA. play the Miami Marlins. I don't care. It doesn't interest me in any way. <laughs> but okay, whatever. Well, I think it's good for the fans because, you know, a fan fans that like would like like to see um for instance Mike Trout, but Mike Trout doesn't play the Marlins a lot, but the get fans get your car and drive Miami, to LA or fly to freaking Tampa and watch him play. You don't have to change the whole thing. Yeah, the way fans you... don't even come out to see my, the Miami the people that live in Miami don't come out to see the Marlins. How are they going to fly out to California? Yeah. So I get your point. People definitely go out to the ballpark to see special players. Yeah, they do. Let's talk about how great – let's do a show, next show, about great baseball movies. All right. We can definitely do that. Cool. Put that on the docket. I will put that on the docket. <laughs> well, did we cover everything you wanted to cover? I think we really did. You didn't really give your thoughts on the Red Sox. You got any thoughts on the Red Sox? Uh, well, uh, other than to say that I think probably fourth is where they're going to finish in the division, maybe even last if the Orioles – Weren't they last last year? Huh? Didn't the Red Sox finish last in yeah, the Yeah, I think year? they did. I think they did. I'm not – I mean uh, – But, but I've heard people say that the Orioles – what the Orioles did last year was probably a little over their heads. Yeah, and they're it will be interesting to see the Orioles and and how they progress this season. I'm interested. They have a they have a really good uh, farm system, but they also you know a lot of those players are coming up like uh, Gunnar Henderson, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Adley's up now full time as he was last year. So, I mean, those are those are two really good players. But again, Gunnar's in a position where he hasn't proven really anything. What did he play for? Like half a year. 
Yeah, if that, maybe months. two months. So, I mean, he looks like a good ball player, but you got to, you know, there's been a lot of guys that have played well for two months and then the next year haven't played well for six months. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I know definitely what you mean. Oh, you know what I mean. Well, I mean, that was your style when you played. I mean, you played well for two days and they didn't play well for six months. So, I mean. <laughs> yeah. What is going on there? I don't know. I'll do it. That was a little like Max Headgroom. It reminded me of. <laughs> well, <laughs> wrap this up, right? I mean, uh, yes. So you, you that talked is, about what you wanted to talk about. That is my discussion with Chris Dufour, Red Sox fan extraordinaire, and you got it right from the horse's mouth. I knew you were going to call me a horse, and I was like, no, "Don't do it! Don't no, don't do it!" Do it. Don't. But you did it. <laughs> Horrible. So that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off. Peace.